Hello! Welcome to the Jesse James Beads Facebook page. It is Thursday the 14th of October I want to say. If we haven't met before, I'm Jem. I'm sitting in the middle of the United Kingdom, obviously not in a field. I'm in my house, making lots of sense already. It's my pleasure to be with you here today. It's 9pm over here in the UK and we've definitely hit autumn quite hard at the moment. Bit chilly, bit of a nip in the air and the leaves are definitely turning to rust. It's my pleasure to be with you here today with some absolutely fabulous beads coming at you from the Jesse James Beads Facebook page. Now I've got three key design elements to share with you today which I'm going to just pop down to the board in a tick and show you what we're looking at creating but what's really cool is that it's one basic design idea but endless ways in which you can create beautiful frames for your focal I'm going to say golem beads. If you call them golem beads, then I'm really sorry that I've pronounced that poorly. I do apologise. So as I say, I'm Gem. I'm from the United Kingdom. It's my pleasure to be with you. Pop in and give me a wave and let me know that you're watching. What I'm going to do is just pop you down to the board for a quick sneak preview of what we're going to look at tonight. So let's pop to this camera. Here we go, got some wire hiding in the corner, rather naughtily trying to get in on the action. So these beautiful golem beads or golem beads are what we're going to be working with. The attention to detail in them is absolutely glorious. They're really, really beautifully made and created with a passion you can see that's kind of coming out from them. So I've got a sample set of three here and I've made three quite different but similar design so there's three different ways that we're looking at working tonight how are you all susan is in hey susan how are you good evening from sherry how are you my lovely jody is in from wisconsin hello darling virginia is in hi gem love the green bead it is beautiful these are very very cool this reminds me of an oversimplified almost like a mandala design it's very very beautiful that's like you just your beautiful cookie kind of design there i'm not gonna lie that's what led me to choose some accenting beads from the mini beads in cookie dough which is this one we'll have a quick look at those in a minute but these are the beads that we're going to be looking at tonight so uh, this one is almost like a beautiful almost grecian inspired flying saucer designs but they're all beautiful in their own right so who else we've we got we've got elizabeth in giving us a great big juicy wave thank you darling maria is in hi gem jjb sarah and makers from buena park california hello sweetheart i hope you've all had beautiful days so those are the beads that i'm going to be playing with tonight they are gorgeous and these are your three designs which we're going to have a look at now there's two basic design types they're all like a frame for your golem beads and this one and this one make up in a very similar way but look completely different this was entirely inspired by the little curls that we have on this beautiful golem bead just here I don't know this one almost had me thinking it was like a beautiful turtle which is in part what influenced the design creation there so we're going to learn two designs but there's three looks this and this make up very very similarly let me put you back up to my silly face so i can give you a big wave and a hello and a smile tell me what you've been up to today my lovely lovely jesse james beads folks so what we normally do on a Thursday live with Jem, that's me, um, is we just hang out for a bit. We have a quick chat just to give people an opportunity to slide on into the live because obviously not everybody can drop everything and make haste to Facebook. So we're just going to have a bit of a chat. Why don't you tell me what you've been up to today? Let's have a look who we've got in so far. We've got Susan, Sherry, Jody, Virginia, Elizabeth and Maria have all said hi so far. 
So I hope that the sound and vision is coming through safely for you. Uh, I've had some issues with technology this week, but um, you'll be pleased to know my little dog's a little bit better because he was poorly earlier on in the week and he's fine now. So he's gone for a lie down, but he's doing okay. Let's have a quick flick down again for the people that are just arriving at the projects for today's video tutorial. So they're both designs. These are a variation on a theme, one of the other. Both of these are built in a very, very similar way. And then this one is just slightly different, but each of them give an extra flashy frame to those beautiful golem beads. So how's the weather over your way of the world? I absolutely need your storage system, Gem says Jody. My storage system is semi-chaotic. <gasps> Helen has watched the new Bond film. I'm so jealous. I simply have not had the time to go to the cinema for three hours. I cannot wait because I am a huge fan of Bond. I won't do any singing for you tonight because I actually love all of your little ears and uh, wouldn't want to inflict my singing upon them. Bonnie is in. Hello, Bonnie. I hope you've had a beautiful day. So my storage system, let's flop, go back up to here. It's chaos is what it is, but it's organised chaos and I kind of know where pretty much everything is. Although I was looking for some faceted citrine yesterday and they remain mysteriously unfound, but never mind. So let's go back to those golem beads. If I'm saying that wrong, you'll have to let me know. That's how I would say it, um, because I would imagine there is some form of clay going on here. And that's what I'm basing my pronunciation on. So what have you all been up to today? Helen's been to the movies and she's seen the new Bond film, which is absolutely exciting. I really must get out that way and have a look myself. So we're going to be creating this one, which is a beautiful framework design for the larger of the three golem beads I have received. Beautiful, beautiful that they are. And then these two would make up in almost the identical way, but you can see that the outside layer is quite different. So I'm going to show you how to make the waves design and the bubbles design. Both of these will be coming up. Golem makes me think, Gollum makes me think of character in Lord of the Rings, absolutely. Whereas Golem reminds me, I don't know if we have any uh, people who were watching the X-Files in the 90s. There was an episode of the X-Files which featured a golem, a clay man. So I'm not going to go on and on about that, um, but uh, that's what I'm basing my pronunciation on. So let's pop down to the board and let's have a quick chat about the tools that we need for the tutorials today, what you would ideally have and what you can get away with having. So I'm going to be using, as ever, my good quality flush cutters. Having a nice smooth end to your wire makes all the difference. I'm also going to be using my bent chain nose pliers. Now, if you don't have bent chain nose pliers, chain nose pliers would be adequate. And flat pliers would also work if that is what you've got in your availability. I also will always have round nose pliers. Now these are not terribly expensive. You can pick these up for not a vast amount of money and it's well worth getting some with a beautiful box joint. I'm also going to be referring to my multi-step bail making pliers tonight. Now if you don't have these at the moment, what you can do is use different parts of your round nose pliers. So for the smaller loops in this almost turtley type uh, surrounding, you can create those bubbles lower down near the base and higher up near the tips to get those different round forms. But if you are able to grab yourself some multi-step bail makers, they are an absolute boon. I do use them all the time. So let's pop those out of the way and talk about wire. So wire is my jewellery making lifeblood. I've been making jewellery for about 11 years now. I started off by stranding uh, beads, which I think is somewhere that a lot of us get involved. And obviously at Jesse James Beads, which is where we are right now, you do have such a beautiful availability of different beads. I've decided to add in a few extra beads for the central piece here from the cookie dough mini bead mix, which is from the ice cream range. I thought they were really complementary colour wise. Now I'm going to be working in two gauges of wire tonight. They are round wire, both of them, and I've got 18 gauge, that's equivalent to one millimetre. And we've also got some 26 gauge. This is equivalent to 
uh, 0.4 millimeter gauge i almost forgot the plot for a second then that would be decidedly um sad wouldn't it uh golems are also in jewish mythology but terry pratchett made them real people yes that makes a lot of sense now um so jody has given me a hearty me i'm presuming that's for the x files reference what a great show and what a great couple of character actors involved so i'm using only round wire round wire is very easy to obtain pretty much anywhere in the world that gives you jewelry making wire you can get round wire so i've created the designs in a silver plated colorway but because it seems to show up better on camera i've grabbed in some copper wire to work with this evening what i might even do is create a couple of pieces with both silver and copper colorways just so that you can see the process let me pop that smaller piece of wire out of the way i'm going to hook these beads out of the way as well for now and we're going to start off with creating the two different types of framing that go around the outside of the two smaller beads. So if I pop my golem beads up to the side, and then if I just go back to my streaming software, I can check that these are going to still be in vision, but hopefully not pinged into infinity and beyond when I uh, thwack them with my pliers, which is basically an inevitability. So we've got these beads just hanging out at the top corner and I've got myself a section of around about 10 or 11 inches of that 18 gauge round copper wire. Now you can work with whatever colour you fancy, obviously it's entirely up to you. That's the beauty of making your own jewellery or beaded designs here at Jesse James. You can create it exactly your way, you can make it something that's so very very personal. I'm working in copper because it tends to show up on camera okay, whereas the silver can sometimes get a little tiny bit lost so if you do have any questions i am able to see your comments in real time on facebook give me a shout if i can do anything to assist so the first pattern that we're going to make if i bring you in an example that i created in silver earlier on pop that on the back of my hand and hopefully you'll be able to see this is the bubble design now you can create those little bubbles in even sized hoops or circles if you like but i really loved seeing them in the two different sizes now as i referenced earlier i'm going to be popping in with my bail making multi-step bail makers uh, purely because it's really easy for me to achieve these two different sizes without changing too much in the plier uh, area so i'm going to show you how to create this little strip first and i also want to reference the fact that how you can space those bubbles as well so you can space the them quite close together or you can space them a little bit further apart if i pop those both down there i'm going to show you how to create this small section first of all so let's move the board a little bit more clear so my bail making pliers my stepped bail making pliers have got six sizes and i refer to the smallest size as one the largest size as six so i'm going to be using size two and size four which is the second and fourth sizes on the list that you can choose from now what i will do after i've shown you a little bit of creating that bubble strand if you like or that bubble surround i'll show you how to achieve something similar with some basic round nose pliers but these are an absolute boon so you don't need to leave too much wire on the end what i would say is make sure that you're trimming that end really neatly so you use the flush side of your flush cutters make sure that you get that little residue away and in your scrap pot and i'm going to start by making the smaller size of the bubbles what brand are the step pliers they are beadalon these are my beadalon stepped bail making pliers as are the little round nose pliers complete with a hair sorry about that that was grim so i like uh, beadle on pliers because you have a beautiful box joint to work with and they're a very very good quality they're also really very affordable so i'm going to start with as i said earlier this is size one so size two size two is the second largest on here but i will show you so i'm going to put the size that i want to create underneath the wire and the supporting size up above and i'm just going to twist that around until that folds all the way and i'm just making if i remove the pliers i'm just opening and twisting 
opening and twisting to create that form. Now you can see that what I want in the example is a straight line with the bubbles forming along the top. So once I've created that shape, what I need to do is pop the form back into position and just take a second to straighten that up so that I've got this lovely, I'm going to refer to this as a baseline. So there's the baseline, there's, where's the, can't say words now. Here are the golem beads. That would be these. You've got the cookie, you've got the, I'm going to call it mandala, I realise it's not really a mandala, and then we've got this beautiful saucer, almost like a, a Greek spaceship, and I'm back off to the X-Files again. These are the golem beads. So the wire that's going to form the supporting act to frame our golem beads. Uh, where can I purchase? Okay, I will have to refer you to one of the lovely people uh, who will work on the social, social media. So it will either be Sarah or it could be May or it could be Danielle. I'm not sure who we have with us today, but I'm sure that they will pop in and give you a link. I'm not quite sure if they've even launched just yet, but I only received these a couple of days ago. So once I have got my first bubble on the line and my baseline is reasonably straight, what I'm going to do is now move on to from step two to step four, and I'm going to recreate that technique. So I'm going to open and close those pliers, open and close, open and close, and that draws all the way around. So if I remove the pliers, you can see that we've got a small bubble and then a large bubble. Now, if these two wires where they cross at the bottom aren't quite smooth enough for you, you can pop the relevant step from your step bow makers back in. If I flip that design over really quickly, you can just very, very gently squeeze that, push down on both sides of the baseline or the base wire, and you remove that and you can see that that's a little bit smoother. So I'm going to try and do this uh, in reverse now so that it makes sense for South Paws also. Uh, Elizabeth says, love the X-Files. Anne says, love the X-Files. Yes, me too. I was absolutely mad for it. Long time ago now. <laughs> so if you remember, we're working on size two and size four. So I'm going to do the alternating design. So I want to pop size two just here and I'm doing this backwards now so that it makes sense if you want to work in the opposite direction. So I've gone half the way round that circular form and I'm just going to pull the wire to show you an alternative way of forming that design. So if I remove the pliers from the wire that we're working on you can see that that baseline is staying reasonably flat and we are getting a small bubble, a large bubble and a small bubble. So I'm going to do one more large bubble which is step one, two, three, and four. So it's step four, we need to pop that in. I've gone back to right-handed because that's my dominance. And you can either draw the wire around the step or you can move the pliers. It's really whatever you feel most comfortable with. So I've turned that upside down for another way of creating that loop. If you find that one of your bubbles is too close or too far away, from its neighbouring bubble and what we want to do is to create a sense of symmetry or repetition. We don't want our handcrafted wire work to look like a machine made it but we want it to look like we took time and we cared about what we were doing. Uh, thank you for the lefty help, I'm a lefty. Well absolutely my best friend Deb is a lefty, she's a southpaw and she taught me um, that I really need to just kind of go for both sides of the equation where I possibly can. So what I am going to do is show you how to move this bubble along slightly. What we're going to do is imagine that it was too close to the smaller bubble. It's actually looking really good at the moment, but if it was too close, what we're going to do is put the pliers back on like so. Let me see if I can turn this over. And we're going to move that bubble along. Can you see that I'm very gently opening and closing and we're just opening up the gap. It looks like it's some kind of arcane magic. It isn't. What we're doing is we're just shifting that wire along. So I'm pulling in this direction to stretch that wire out and then I'm reshaping the baseline. So if I pop that back down on the board, you can see that we've increased that gap. We've also opened the base up slightly. So you can just pinch that together very, very gently and reform that exactly 
how you want it to be so now I've obviously wrecked it because I've opened it out but it was in shape beforehand now if you don't currently have access to the bail makers I'm going to pop in with my round nose pliers now and show you how you can achieve something very similar so if I just trim this away this is going in the scrap pot so let's give the smooth cut to the remaining segment and what we're going to do is come in with those round nose pliers so I'm going to start very very close to the end of the wire because you don't need a huge leading edge we're just going to wrap that to a frame in a few minutes so what we're going to do is start by creating a small bubble at one end so I'm going to open and close those pliers open and close those pliers, open and close, and just move that all the way around. So you can see that that baseline is a little bit out of true. So I'm just going to push up like so until that sits reasonably flat. Now, if you wanted to create this with your round nose pliers and you didn't have access to bail makers, what you can do is put a little mark with a, a marker pen at the two positions that you're planning on using. It will come off with nail polish remover or acetone a bit later on if you don't want it. Ah, good evening, Lois. Glad to have your company and thank you very much, Jodie, for linking the Golem Bees. Much appreciated. So if you pop a little mark on, I don't know if I've got my other pliers. Yeah, I have. All I've done there is used a red marker pen to put a little line on the pliers where I want to use it as a measurement so you can absolutely do that with your round nose pliers as well and you can wipe that off later if you need to so we've created our first loop at around about here we're going to create the larger of the two loops now further down you can see how much further down the nose that is on the round nose pliers so I'm opening and closing opening and closing very very gentle and small movements and in that way we shouldn't mark the wire too much now you will need to manually form that baseline to make sure that it's nice and smooth one of the reasons I like having lines such as this wood grain on my working board is I can cheat and I can use them to make sure that I'm quite happy with how that sits so we would then go back to the first oh, it's got an imaginary mark so I'm hoping that this doesn't look too terrible uh, I think it was probably about there so we're just opening and closing opening and closing and we're drawing the wire around the pliers and the reason I'm stressing that you need to be opening and closing quite gently is if you go in really really strongly and you stress those two sides together you will mark the wire now some of this wire is going to be covered with a smaller binding wire anyway so it's not the end of the world if you do but you can recreate the idea without the stepped bail makers but honestly they are an absolutely fabulous piece of kit to have we've got Susie in from Arizona hello to you I hope you're having a beautiful day so that's how we have created the bubble section of the uh, outer design so the next thing that I want to show you is how to create the wave design to go around the edge of that framework now this took me two full days to make in a way that I was happy with sharing uh, I started off by doing a, quite a square Greek key design and it was quite tricky so I wanted to make that slightly more accessible for people who are perhaps a little bit newer to wire but I love wire work in jewellery so I'm here to encourage people to give it a go even if you just get a couple of reels and your basic tools most of them are tools that you could probably use in other beading or other areas of crafting and design with Jesse James beads. So let's have a look at creating the waveform. I'm going to pop that back on the mat first so you can have a look at what I'm talking about. So this is the design that we're going to create next. Let me get these two bubble designs out of the way and show you what the wave design looks like. It doesn't look like much until it's added to that framework. So what we're looking to do is to create a series of waves. Now I tried this first of all in 20 gauge wire. If I put that on the back of my hand you might see it better. And the 20 gauge wire was really easy to work with. So if you have some 20 gauge you can practice with this. But in the realities of wearing jewellery what will happen is this will very easily just bend out of shape it will just get knocked far too easily so I upped to 18 gauge which always sounds very weird when I say I upped it to 18 gauge because it's kind of the numbers are getting lower 
<laughs> you know what I mean. So I'm going to show you how to make these wave forms next and I have a little bit more copper wire to show you that because it will show up a little bit better on the board. So I'm just going to free off. Now if you're going to make the wave design for the larger of the golem beads you may need to use quite a lot. If you're going to make it for the smaller golem beads and create very large waves then you'll probably need a good 14 or 15 inches of the wire. Now what that means in reality on the board is that that's incredibly difficult to show you. So I am going to suggest that you create with around about a 15 inch section of wire to get nice size wave forms but I'm going to cut a much shorter length of wire so I don't flip everything onto the floor which is pretty much an inevitability at this stage. So I'm just going to pop this particular one back up to the top here and I'm going to leave that over to one side so you can see where we're going to go next. Rosanna is in. Hi I am late. Hi Gem. It's lovely to have your company. Thank you very much for coming in Rosanna. I hope you had a good time at the Ren Fair last was it last weekend? I can't remember. So as I said, you'd need a good 14 or 15 inches. This again is 18 gauge wire, which is equivalent to one millimeter across. It's round wire. It's easy enough to obtain. And usually this one of your favorite colors will be in stock. So with wire work, warming your wire before you do anything to it is key. It will act in a much more fluid and smooth way. So I've probably slightly over egged it there. I only need to do that three or four times, but it's kind of addictive because it makes it so smooth and beautiful to work with. So I'm going to work with this in a right handed fashion because that is my nature. I'm not 100% certain I'd be able to do this southpaw, so many apologies. You would need to invert that, but there are a video apps that you can actually use to invert a video. If you need help with that, then you are probably used to left decising everything as you go. Does that make sense? Left decising is not a word. Rosanna said, yes, this last weekend, had a great time. Uh, none of your seven circlets came home. Well, that is good news indeed. Brilliant news. Oh gosh, Sharon says, had to uninstall FB and reinstall, still not working right. Last week, it was a bit of a mare, but we are back here and on it now. So I'm glad that you're here and thank you for hanging out with me. So again, we don't need a huge leading edge. We're only really working with perhaps a quarter of an inch before we make our first angle. Now, what I'm going to do is make a very sharp angle to begin with, but then I'm going to draw that back so that it's about uh, somewhere between 45 and 50 degrees up. This again is a design which requires a reasonably flat baseline. If I bring you a piece in, here we go. This has started to curve already, which is a good thing. You actually want it to curve. But the point is that we need this baseline to be reasonably the same height all the way along. There will be some minor variations, but this is what we're working towards creating. Jody says, my synapses are firing. I have a twisting tool and curious if using two strands of 20 or 22 would stabilize that size wire in this process. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. Wire is a fickle mistress and sometimes if you twist two wires together you actually end up weakening it more than you do strengthening it. So have a play, take some wire that you have perhaps plenty of spare and give it a go. So I'm going to pop this piece back down and we're going to continue working along the line. So I've created 45 to 50 degree angle. I just want to get rid of that kink while I can. I'm just going to hold that into position. Now what I want to do is give that a little bit more warmth and make sure that that's going to be nice and smooth. I'm going to flip the design over because what I want to do is to create a smooth swoosh now. So we're upside down to the baseline. We're coming down rather than up at the moment. And because I've warmed that wire, I'm going to perform wire magic. So I'm holding the base and I'm going to swoosh that all the way around into a nice almost a teardrop shape. So we've got almost a teardrop shape just there and it's not 90 degrees, it's about 50 degrees from that baseline. So I'm going to spin that all the way back around so that you can see what we've got so far. We've come along about a maybe about a quarter of an inch and we've got this loop appearing up and above. So what I want to do, I'm going to come from underneath with my bent chain nose pliers and grip a hold. 
what I need to do is to create the racetrack hairpin <laughs> which if you've had any experience with me here at Jesse James I do this quite a lot what I want to do is to bend that wire very sharply back and around on itself so that it chases in the same direction it came from so that's a little bit open at the moment but what we're going to do is just tidy that up I need to spin the design around so I can hold it and I need to pinch that end section together now when I'm applying the strength here it needs to be very controlled it can take a little bit of strength to just get that to close up but what we need to do is very very measured small and gradual closing together of those sides of the pliers so I'm going to squeeze gently and remove squeeze gently and remove and you can see that that has now closed up really nicely so I'm going to support everything between my flat facing pliers you can use any flat facing pliers for this uh, pliers for this design but I'm always preferring to use my bent chain nose now we're working in two dimensions only so everything we're designing should fit between two panes of glass remembering that when I apply a squishing motion now to support the whole of the design I'm not pressing any wire on top of any other wire and what that means is I can recreate that first inverted teardrop that we created all the way back round on itself so if I put that down to the board on a lighter area we've come along we've gone around in an inverted teardrop we've created the hairpin racetrack squish and now we're following that all the way back round to the baseline I'm going to invert the design again because it is easier for me to show you I'm taking my pliers underneath and I'm going to pinch the long tail of the wire what I need to do is bring that back around to recreate that baseline that we're working to and the reason that we need a semi flat or nearly flat baseline is that it is going to sit on a frame to frame our golem beads in a minute or two difficult to see with the background and not staying in focus okay uh, let's have a look at the focus then the focus is fixed to the board so if I come up here that's as focused as it is possible to be so that's all back in focus if I lift this up slightly from the board hopefully you'll be able to see that give that a bit of a squash and again nothing is crossing over everything is in two dimensions so I'm going to give that another quick squeeze with the flat faces of my pliers to make sure that that's nice and strong and I've got that shape set into the wire what I'm going to do now is measure a distance along and if we use this as the basis for that measurement then we can repeat it over and over again so you could have a small piece of paper you could use a ruler or something very very similar looking good from here fine here brilliant thank you very much my lovelies that's always good to see so what I'm going to do is estimate this distance and repeat it so that we get another 50 degree bend so if I flip this on its head again like so I'll put my pliers underneath and then I'm going to push that down to 90 degrees and then draw it back again the reason I push it all the way to 90 and then draw it back is because you get sharper definition on this first bend in the wire so again if I just flip that around and give that a bit of a heat through a bit of a warm making sure that's nice and fluid now what we did last time is we flipped that over and supported the section of wire that is the long tail so we've got our straight baseline going on we've got our first little loopy section or wave section what I'm going to do is make sure that that's nice and warm and then draw the wire around to repeat that teardrop formation shape now you have one right here to reference size wise so it's kind of trying to repeat the same size design so if I pop those pliers in underneath draw that long tail of wire all the way back on itself and all we're doing now is repeating that first stage so if I take those pliers underneath we're going to squish remove squish remove squish and remove support the whole thing and draw that tail all the way back around 
until it meets the baseline. What you can do before you create your next bend to continue that baseline is make sure that these two little waves are very, very similar. So if you need to, you can just push that in slightly and then retighten the long tail of wire. So of the two framing designs, this one is slightly more tricky, but I was desperate to share it with you because it matches so well with the large saucer type golem bead. So we're going to turn that baseline on its edge, push that to continue and offer it up to a straight line like so. So hopefully you can see that that would continue on its way. My second wave is ever so slightly larger than the first one. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. If you want to get into it, you absolutely can make measurements to ensure that you have an exacting repetition. So that is what it will look like when it's finished. If I pop that on the back of the hand, the two colours side by side, you can see how that works. You can also play with how large they are. You could have a large one, a small one, a large one, a small one. Now, if you do opt to have alternating sizes, what it enables you to do is get away with slight variances in those waves. So that's always an option if you want to make that slightly more effective visually. So that's the second of our two framed designs, like so. So what I want to do now is I'll pick a piece and I think we'll go with the copper looped design because it will show up better. One thing I want to say is that you have gaps between each of these waves or bubbles. We're going to attach this to a framework in a second using those gaps. So whether you go for the waves or whether you go for the bubbles, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to pop these out of the way now and we're going to work on creating a framework for this almost mandala like piece here. So if I scooch those out of the way for the moment, it does make it unique, Lois, you're absolutely correct. I have here around about 12 inches of the 18 gauge wire. I'm going to run that between thumb and forefinger, maybe three or four times just to get some smoothness and fluidity to it. Now, what you can do uh, for this is use really quite scrappy sections of wire. It doesn't need to be a huge amount. What it's useful to have is a mandrel. I have my trusty wooden mandrel that I've had for about a thousand years, but you could use something like a torch or a lip balm or a lip gloss bottle or the lid of nail varnish, something like that. It doesn't need to be a professional tool if you don't have one. That said, this is so useful, I use it all the time. So what I want to do, I think probably will only use maybe three or four inches of wire. So I'm going to trim myself a shorter length. This can be made with scraps from your offcuts pile, which is always really useful to use up those shorter lengths. If I scooch that over to one side, what I want to do now is just take a guess at how large on my round form the bead in question is going to need a frame. Now we don't want something that's exactly the same size. So what I'm going to do is create just a circular form by wrapping that pre-warmed wire all the way around and crossing it over. If I remove the form, you'll see what we have achieved. And also you can do that by hand if you need to. Uh, but like I said, you don't need a professional tool to create this. So what I'm going to do is offer that up to the bead. That's actually a pretty good guesstimate, I think. So I'm not going to overly worry about changing that in any way. What I'm going to do now is to create two very small loops in the wires up at the top. Now I have a section of scrap wire here to show you what I mean by creating a loop. So I'm just going to smooth this warm for a second. I'm going to pop in with my round nose pliers and I'm just going to turn the end one, two, three, four very small movements and I've created a loop. Now I'm going to centralize that loop by putting my bent chain nose pliers inside drawing the tail back down. So the loop now sits centrally on the end of my wire like so. So I'm going to do that in the center top of this small circular form of wire we've created. So I'm going to pop in again with those round nose pliers. If it's easier for you, you can trim away just at the top. So if I trim this side and then I trim this side, and you can see there's a very small amount of wire going past the point at which the wires cross at the top. So if I take the wire that's nearest to me and I just start by rolling that wire back around 
into the centre. So that sits in the centre top of that almost like a ring design that we've created and I'm going to do the same on the other side if it's easier for you you can do those in opposite directions to begin with what they need to do is sit side by side so they're sitting reasonably side by side what I need to do now is centralize them on that wire so if I pop my chain nose pliers underneath I'm just closing the loop and then like we did with the example in the silver wire I'm centralizing that hoop shape or loop shape onto the end of each of those respective sides of the ring shape. Now they're going to get quite busy because one is going to sit on top of the other in a moment. If I show you what I mean, they need to sit exactly side by side to begin with. And then what we're going to do is put one above the other and slide a section of wire through. So you can see how that fits. And before you go any further, you would just need to check that your bead will still fit inside the aperture you've allowed it. So that does indeed fit. So I'm happy with my little miniature frame that we've created. So what are we going to do now? Um, I think I'm going to need a baby wipes warmer to keep wire in. Lol, my fingertips are tender. Yes, you may or may not have noticed that wire workers' fingertips do look a little bit sore. It's because I work with wire every single day for very many hours. So I've got a short section here. It's about 12 inches of my 26 gauge wire. And what we're going to do is size up one of these sections that we created. It would either be the wave form or the bubble form. And we're going to make that fit around the outside of our funky little ring shape that we've made. So I have found the easiest way to do this is to start centre down at the bottom there in the middle. We're going to create an even shape going around. So I quite like symmetry in this design. You don't have to have symmetry, but I've created a piece where it's small, large, small, large, small, large, small. So that becomes the centre piece at the bottom. So if I support that central loop and just very carefully and slowly form the wire in a shape that I think will fit around the ring that we made. Now you can do this on your mandrel if you like, but what can happen if you use a mandrel to form that shape is that your loops will start to open up, these lovely bubbly loops that we've created. Rosanna says it wrecks my thumbnails. Yes, it does. They don't survive terribly well, do they? We get something called a wire worker's notch where you get a line up the middle of your nail. You can fix that if you need to with wire uh, with nail strengtheners. So I'm supporting the bubble or the loop and I'm just forming around it by hand, moving on to the next loop very, very gently just to create a circular form. And at the moment, I'm just eyeballing this. I'm just going by eye to see what I think will look best. So I'm going to take that tail of the wire and just bend it over the top there. And it may be that you need to trim some away. So if I add that on, that's actually not a bad fit. What I need to do is put a little bit more bendiness into the baseline of that wire. So I can just give that a bit of a squish and a squeeze and we'll see how that looks. So I think if we trim away the tail ends of the loopy section, if I trim both of those away to absolute zero, I think that this design is going to work with these bubbles. Now what you can do, obviously, is you can be very, very thorough. You can measure the size of your framework and then you can plan what size loops you want to use in the bubble design and you can plan the gaps between them. If you're a planner, you can absolutely do that. I'm kind of, I'm just going to go for it. So what we will do is we will pop the frame up against the bubble section or the outer framework and all I'm going to do now is just draw those two sections together. So I've got my 12 inches of that 26 gauge which is equivalent to 0.4 mil and what I want to do is just wrap this. Now you can wrap solidly between each of those bubbles if you like. It takes a lot of wire. So what I'm going to demonstrate to you is putting four passes of wire around both that inner ring that we made and the outer bubble section. So if I lay my finer gauge wire over the top, push it through the centre and we're looking for the ring to stay in the centre 
and the bubble section to stay next to it. So again, it could be squished between two panes of glass. So what I'm doing is wrapping those two segments together. A lot of wire work uh, can make people feel a little bit overawed, but, but it's basically sewing stuff together with wire. So if I push that wire down through the center again, I've got four passes of wire in this gap between the, the large bubble and the small bubble. And I'm going to draw the wire all the way around and continue on that same pattern. So one and two, and you can see how quick it is, three and four. You need to keep the two segments of wire, the inner ring wire and the outer bubble wire side by side. You can pay a little bit more attention to the spacing on that wrapping if you like push that all the way through. When I get to the other side, I'm going to show you a different way that you can attach these two sections together. You need to go with what makes you comfortable. I finished off with four wraps around the inner ring and the outer bubble section. So what I need to do now is finish off by wrapping three times around just that inner ring wire. So if I push the wire down one and two and three, take that to the back, trim away with my flush cutters and make that nice and smooth. So just causing the wire to circle around in a spiral like so, make that nice and tight. I'm not crushing that hard at all. Thank you Jodie for resharing the golem bead link. Now if I flip the design over like so, you can see that my finer gauge wire has come up from underneath and what I'm going to do is take the end and push that down the center. This is the alternative to pushing the wire through. So I'll show you both ways now, just so that you can pick whichever one makes you happy. You can either take the end of the wire, push it down the center, draw that all the way through. So I'll do that one four times. That's one, that's two. It's a little bit slower, three. And then we're going to go for a fourth pass of wire around both the inner ring and the outer bubble section. Push the end of the wire down the center and pull that into position. You can just take a little extra time to make those nice and neat. Your alternative, which is the speedy version, is to push that wire down the middle. So I'm taking just the next section of wire and pushing it down. Now, if you do this constantly on the same piece of wire, you will weaken it. Because I'm just using the very first section of the wire, it gets pushed through once, maybe twice, before it's being used up. So there's not a huge amount of stress and strain on it. It does speed things up endlessly. Another way that you can do this is to open up your design like so, very, very gently, as if you were opening a jump ring. And then you can wrap around one, two, push that down so that you can fit your three and four in. That for me is a little bit more um, mindful because you're opening the framework and you change the shape a little bit. So you do need to be careful. So again, finishing with one and two and three wraps. Now we're looking at the back, so I'm going to draw that to this side, trim the excess away, put it in the scrap pot rather than in your toes later and squish that wire away neatly like so. You would then need to close that back up so that those two loops sit back one above the other. So I hope that this is a going with you so far. The next thing that I want to do is to use the remainder of that wire to put a post down the center. Now, there are two different ways that you can do this. It's very, very simple. I'm going to show you the first way now. And what we're going to do is to create a wrapped loop up at the top. If you've never seen a wrapped loop before, we're going to take a tail of around about an inch and a half. I'm going to make a large circular form at the top of that wire, like so, using those bail makers again. And what I'm going to do is now support the round shape like so, draw the tail and spiral it around, spiral it around the neck of that design until we get a good three or four wraps going. I've just tightened up those coils slightly. I'm going to trim away that excess like so and pop that in the scrap bin. Smooth away that spiral. And now this is the interesting part because it all starts to come together and everything that I've showed you so far starts to fit. So what we need to do is to line up those two sections here, those two end loops that we created. I'm going to support it as easily as I think you'll be able to see. 
and I'm going to post the end of that wire that we've just created the wrapped loop on through both of those loops. So hopefully you can see that that's gone through both of them. What I'm going to do now is just hold the whole thing in my non-dominant hand, add the golem bead into position, and then we're going to slide that wrapped loop down to form the top of the design where you would hang this on your necklace. So what we're going to do now is trim away to a very small amount of wire, no larger than your loop at the centre bottom. And I'm going to give that a trim, keeping that because we can use that again later. And what I'm going to do is to support the tail of the wire, making sure that the loop that you want to hang the design from is in the correct orientation, so sideways to the rest of your loops. Whilst that is sideways, what I want to do is post that through the loop down at the bottom so that that will come through at the back and all we're going to do with that tiny section of wire here hold that into position and we're just going to turn that end over like so can you see that you've got a bend on that small tail of wire that went through the hole and then once we've bent that through we're just going to close it up very very gently small movements low pressure and that's all tied together instantly. So you have framed your golem bead with small bubble, large bubble, or you could have framed it like this one with those lovely wave designs. Again, you could go small, large, small, large. So that's entirely up to you how you personalize that. I'm going to show you very, very quickly now this design. It is super, super easy, I promise you. So again, I'm going to be working with 18 gauge or one millimeter wire. I'm going to smooth that and I'm only using around about four inches or so off this wire now. And what I want to do is head back to my round form, make sure my wire is super warm, create a circular form. It needs to be slightly larger because I'm working with the slightly larger bead. And we're going to repeat that loop section that we created earlier on. So that's a little bit smaller. I just need to open that up. Now, can you see when you warm wire, how it just does what you want it to do with a little bit of gentle coercion? So I'm going to size that up. That looks a little bit small still. So offer that up again as many times as you need to, to get a really good shape. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. So we need to create those loops again. So if you don't want to trim the wire away, what you can do is turn those loops back and around like so. And then you can centralize that and trim off the excess at this point. It's entirely up to you which way around you do that. As you get used to wire working, you can get much better at estimating how much wire you need to create a small loop like so. So I would say probably I need to go to around about here around about just under a quarter of an inch so I'm going to roll that wire back round and show you what to do if that's a little bit too large so those don't exactly cross over do they so if that's a problem and you need to truncate that all you need to do is just open up that loop a little bit move the pliers around and roll it further along and what you can do is then trim away the excess at the point that you don't need anymore so I'm taking that tiny tail which we need to put in the scrap pot, like so. So my loops are now opposite each other. So if I close the loop up on this side, pop underneath with those pliers again and centralize the loop as we did at the very beginning of the demonstration, get that nice and smooth and in shape. So the same thing on the other side, I've just flipped that upside down, close the loops up and then give them both a squeeze. So one will sit now over the top of the other. Now, very, very simply, I'm going to grab hold of some of my 26 gauge wire. And again, I'm going to demonstrate with a short length because you don't need to see me doing the same thing over and over and over again. So you would probably want about 14 or 15 inches of wire to complete a piece of this size and add on all of those beads. I've grabbed myself a small selection of beads from the Cookie Dough Mini Bead Mix Ice Cream Collection from Jesse James beads and I'm going to add one or two of those on just to show you how simple the technique is. Now you do of course need to make sure that your loops on the end line up and that when they are lined up 
your golem bead will fit inside that circular form. Now it's not terribly circular at the moment, so you can always pop that back on your round form and re-roundinate it to make sure that that does fit more beautifully. I haven't done a terribly good job of making that more round, but you can take a little longer than I am. You don't want to see me sat here for 45 minutes making the perfect circle. So what we're going to do is take my small section of example wire. As I said, for a piece like this, you'd probably want a good 14 inches or so, 12 to 14 inches maybe, of 26 gauge round wire. What I'm going to do is start by wrapping very close to one of my loops. And I, for this piece, I've done seven wraps between each bead. You can decide how many beads you want, how many wraps you want and what kind of spacing you like. But I'm going to show you how to repeat this design so that you can have it in your mind what that looks like finished. So I've laid my finer wire over the ring shape we've created. I'm just going to take that tail all the way around and I'm going to end up wrapping that. I think for the sake of expediency, I'm just going to do it three times so that you can see the difference. For this example, seven times. Trim away the excess on the end pop that in the scrap pot for melting or recycling. Now, as I said, I've done seven times between each bead, but I don't want you to get bored of watching me wrap endlessly. So I'm just flipping the design over onto its side. I will just ensure that that end is flat and smooth. I'm going to introduce my first bead and I think for this time, I'm going to start on a black bead rather than a golden sparkly bead. So I'm adding that onto the end of my wire again to point out 14 maybe inches of the finer gauge wire for a full piece. I'm using a short section to demonstrate. Now my finer gauge wire has come underneath. So for this technique of adding beads to a halo effect or a framework effect, you're going from under to over. As long as you repeat that, it doesn't matter if you start on the top and go to underneath, as long as you're always encircling the wire, going round and round in a spiral. So I'm taking the tail of that wire over the top of the frame, down the center, and I'm going to pull that firmly into position. I'm going to stop here and show you what's happened so far. I've wound on three times around the ring shape that we've created, seven times in the example. I've put the bead flat against the ring shape and I've supported it very firmly whilst I bring the wire over the top and down the center. We're going to wrap now three times around. So you can either push the end through and pull it tight. So that's my second wrap. Or you can push the leading edge down the center and then draw that all the way around. The key here is to repeat the same thing. So if you're going to make a, an absolute cluster of beads all the way around, three wraps is plentiful and keep them super tight together. I want to show you some options actually. I've changed my mind. We're going to show you what it looks like if they're super tight side by side. So pop the bead down into position. I can hold that just like so to show you. Pinch that bead. We've come from underneath, therefore we must go over the top next. So again, down the center, that's one, wrap it around, two, wrap it around, three. So you don't have to alternate beads, you can use whichever beads you want. As long as they sit snugly against the edge of your design, you can just keep on going. So I need to pop back up here. I hope that all of that is making a great deal of sense. I will be around in the comments for a little while just to make sure that you're happy. But that's what we've ended up with, hopefully. As I said before, this has got seven wraps and the beads are quite distanced apart. I've also popped a golden sparkly one, then a black one, then a golden sparkly one. You can do that in whatever order you fancy. We're just going to pop back down to the board for a tick and give you one last look at the designs we've worked on tonight. Now, the finalization of this design is exactly the same as it was with our first design that we created together. So you would create yourself the wrapped loop. I've just got an, an open and closable loop again for the sake of expediency. What you can do is have the design finished in exactly the same way. So the wire you've got at the top is a wrapped loop, passes down through the two holes at the top that you created, those two end loops, and then it links onto the bottom of that framework. If you fancy something that moves around, like this one does, there's a different way of setting it. And that is, let me grab my wire. 
Let's take off only a short amount, about three inches or so again. This is the one millimeter gauge, 18 gauge wire. I'm going to give that a quick smooth. And what I'm going to do is pop a looped section on the bottom. So a coiled section rather. So I'm going to very, very gently start by coiling that wire around like so. I've got myself a loop shape to begin with. I support that loop shape and take the wire around the outside of that loop shape like so until I've got two passes of wire. So we've started one, two, we're going all the way around. Now this next technique, you don't have to do this. You can have it sticking at the bottom of the bead quite simply like this. If that's what you want, you can just have that sticking out the bottom. But I'm going to show you a way of making a head pin, a disc head pin with wire. I'm going to support that across the center of the circular form we've created, bring the tail of wire up and then across the very center. So we've got our circular form going on. The wire is now passing across the middle. Now this goes across everything that I normally teach, which is to not squish where wire crosses wire. So very, very gently I'm going to support that and pull the wire up and away. If you are stuck and you need a head pin and you have no head pins, you want to make earrings and you've got a large hold bead such as the Gollum beads, this will act as a head pin, a disc head pin for you. If you've got large hold beads and only small ball head pins, they will just slide straight off. So there's a cheaty hint for you. What you would then do, oh, let me get the other bead, the bigger one, because it's the one that we fitted this design for. So you can see that that coiled section will support the golem bead really beautifully. And because it's a large form into a large hold bead, that's not going to go anywhere. What we're going to do now is invert the direction. Instead of coming in through the top, we need to go up from underneath. Pop again through both of those loops we made in the ring shaped wire and then sit that into position. You would simply then repeat the section where we made the wrapped loop, but obviously you've got a finite amount of, wow, of wire rather to work with, not wower. I don't know what wower is. I'm just going to draw those two little end sections together so that it sits just a tiny bit more neatly. And then you would create your wrapped loop. Now, because I have got it's maybe an inch and three quarters left. I don't have space to do loads and loads of coils. So I'm going to grip that section of wire, push forwards, and I've created a very tiny neck section there. You can then refer back to the section on creating a wrapped loop, but you'll maybe only get one and a half or two coils of wire on the neck before you would trim away with your flush cutters. So if I clear the board slightly, and just leave in the finalized pieces. I might leave that one in as well because it gives you a sense of where we were going with that design. Just sit that down inside the loop. It's not going to play, is it? Because it's not quite finished. There we go. If I just leave those like that for a second, that's what we've been able to create in really quite a small amount of time. The framing that you add to the framework itself, you've got an inner ring framework and an outer fancy framework. This is endlessly customizable. It can be zigzaggy. It can be small swooshy wave, large swooshy wave. It can be bubbles of any number of size. You are the master of your jewelry making. Let's pop back up to my silly face. <laughs> I think I've overrun slightly. Sorry to keep you. <laughs> Jodie says, I am so delighted with your meticulous instructions. It's really a blessing to be able to see every step too. Thank you, Gem. Thank you for watching with me. And I hope that that all kind of makes some magical sense. This will be uploaded to YouTube in a little while. It will also remain here on the Jesse James Facebook page in the video section. So you can always refer back to it. And if there's any parts that you're a tad misty on, you can just rewind me, uh, make me be quiet. Mm -mm. You can turn the sound off if, if I'm doing your head in slightly, but um, you've got so many different ways that you can frame these absolutely stunning golem beads. And they are so beautifully made and such a wonderful thing to hold. They're really tactile and warm. And my first love, as you know, is wire and gemstones, but these are exquisite and I have really, really loved working with them. They are gorgeous.
So whatever it is you're doing for the rest of your day, I hope you have an amazing time. Thank you for hanging out with me today. It's now just after 10 in the UK in the evening. So I guess that makes it about 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. I'm getting the hang of these time zones uh, linda says hi these are nice elizabeth says wow how cool is that it's really an absolute pleasure to design with you and an absolute pleasure to design with jesse james beads they're stunning the quality is gorgeous and i'm just a happy little camper to be here hanging out with you guys i'm going to love you and leave you for now um if they will let me back again at the helm i'll be here on thursday of next week at 4 p.m eastern standard i do hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day i'll see you soon bye